In this paper, I'm going to show you how to properly format your research paper so that it fits MLA formatting. What I have here is a very typical looking research paper. I see a lot of these out of student work um, where the title is really big and it's in a different font. While you may think this may look better, it actually looks very elementary and it's not an MLA formatting. The first thing that I want to do is I need to make sure that all of my font is the exact same. You don't want to have any different fonts within your paper and you want to use something really logical. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight everything I have and change my font to Arial. If I were you, I would either use Arial or Calibri. Those are going to be the most, what I would call, normal fonts. So I'm turning it to Arial. We then need to make sure that our paper is all in the same size font. MLA standard is size 12 font, so I'm going to make mine size 12. All right. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that my title is not underlined. You do not need to underline it. The only thing that's going to be different about your title is it's going to be centered, unlike the rest of your paper. The next thing I need to do is I need to take off my name from underneath my title. The name is actually going to go in the top left corner. To get my text in the top left corner, I just need to click right before my title, and then I need to go over here, hit enter, it's going to take it down a little bit, and then I'm going to make sure it's left aligned. That's this button right here. And I'm going to type my name, my assignment, my class, and the date. I just like to put the month and then the year. I then need to make sure that everything is double spaced. You should already know how to do this, but go ahead, copy everything, go up here to the button with the arrow next to it, go down to double. The next thing you need to do is take off that extra space and go ahead and indent your first paragraph. To indent, hit the tab button and that'll take it over automatically. The next thing I'm going to show you, it has more to do with your introduction and your actual writing of your introduction rather than MLA formatting. In your paper, you don't want to use first person or second person. That means you're not going to be saying, I think, or I feel, or I believe, or I'm going to be writing a paper. Take all of that out. That's really elementary. You also don't want to say you. For example, I could say, you see cell phones everywhere in school. Don't say that. Think about what you're trying to say when you say you, and figure out who it actually is. Is it students see cell phones everywhere? Is it teachers see cell phones everywhere? Is it people see cell phones everywhere? Figure out what you're actually trying to say, and avoid second person. So looking at my first paragraph, it says I'm going to be writing this paper about why cell phones shouldn't be allowed in school. I already know that you're writing this paper. I know you're writing about cell phones in school. So go ahead and take all of that out. Additionally, my research paper about cell phones in school sounds pretty childish. I know it's your research paper. You already wrote it up here. Just tell me what the main idea is going to be. And that main idea is cell phones in school. I then need to come up with a better introduction. Um, I'm going to take I think off of that, my thesis statement. So I'm going to come up with a better introduction. Your introduction can be a hypothetical situation where you make up a scenario in which cell phones are being used in school. Um, it could be background information, the history of cell phones. It could be a definition. Um, there's a lot of ways that you can do this. I'm going to quickly write one and show you what I did with it. OK, you can see that I've added a bit to my paper. What I've done is I've just highlighted a problem with cell phones. I have a sentence about how they're everywhere. I wrote, in today's society, cell phones can be found in the pockets, purses, backpacks, or hands of nearly every student. And then I say why this is a problem. I said, while cell phones have many benefits, these benefits do not extend to student learning. In fact, many students' education is suffering because of their cell phone usage within the classroom. Then I have my thesis statement. You've probably already written your thesis statement, which includes your main idea and your stance, and then your three main arguments. My thesis statement says cell phones shouldn't be allowed in school because students cannot multitask, they interrupt lessons, and cause students' grades to drop. So my next paragraph, I'm going to start with that first main idea, which is students cannot multitask. So what I would do is I would start my next paragraph with one reason cell phones should not be allowed in school is that students cannot multitask. Try and format your paper the same way. Use your thesis statement and whatever you wrote as your first argument is going to be the main idea of your first body paragraph. Okay, good luck.